Man, is he ever gorgeous. I got three years of history with that buck. That's the other one we talked about. We got in here, that split G2 buck. Hunted, what, 35 days with a bow? Never laid eyes on him or this six by seven. Good job, Rayleigh. Nice picture taking. Give yeah, high five, man. Yeah, good job. Did Mama do a good job? Uh -huh. I did. You like my buck? That right there was the wide seven. The season is winding down, and I think I saw him go down over there. going to pick the story up right where I left it last week with Owen Riegler. If you remember, Owen took a beautiful buck with his slug gun and had an even better buck come out after firing the shot. Now we pick up the action on the same farm and in the same field just a few days later as Owen takes his friend Rachel out for her first deer hunt in many years. Their target is the bigger buck that Owen saw, the one with the split G2s. What temperature dropped out today, here it is December 14th. This is opening day of second shotgun here in Iowa. We're heading back to the same blind I hunted last blog where I shot that six by seven. We're going after that split G2 buck. Only thing is, I'm not hunting. I've got my girlfriend with me. She's gonna be doing the shooting, so I'll be doing the film and we'll see how that goes. But she doesn't want to be on camera necessarily, so that's why I'm doing the interview, so. Well, let's get ahead and back up in there. We'll see how it goes. Could you leave me alone? I don't like you right now. I don't think she likes getting filmed for some reason. I don't know. Still trying to figure this out. you or were you holding it was a little quarter too so you wanted to be basically right on the shoulder that's how okay he looked like he was hurt when he ran over that terrace like he might go down is that the biggest deer you ever shot at yo yo <laughs> have you not seen the michigan deer Oh, 
What are you shaking? Oh. Give me five. Oh my god. Oh. Well, we had to go back and get Joe, so we had some more, somebody else to film, but I got a chance to watch that footage back, and that's not a shot I would take with a bow, but with a gun, I don't mind that quarter two angle. You just gotta know your angle. So on, in that particular case, you wanna be on the front side of the shoulder on that. But looked like she was tight right there behind the shoulder. So I think we've got a deer. Let's go see if we can get on blood and, and track him down here. Well, we got on blood right here. Looks like he goes into the ditch. Let's see if we can follow it up. There he is, right there, boys. <laughs> Look at that. <laughs> <laughs> Give me five. Uh, I told you. He didn't go anywhere, did he? No. Probably not. He didn't make it. From the last place we could see him right there, that's not another. Where we stopped to, we should if, have been able to see if him. If I knew the viewfinder was on him, I was on him, we would have seen him fall. Oh, oh. Check that out. You were in there good on the shoulder. Look, I that was better you. than I thought. Yeah, you had a good angle on him. I told you, I knew I made a good shot. Absolutely. Chance. Hey, this is a special moment. I'm going to let you do this. What do you want? It? It's your deer. What do you want? It? On. It's official. There you go. It's official. Yep. Don't lose that part. We got to call that in. Well, here he is. I'm surprised we didn't see him go down. Actually, he's just from where I had him in the viewfinder. There, he's just another about 30 yards right here. So, what a heck of a nice deer. Solid mass. Split twos, which he's had these for several years. There was one year he had a kicker off his brow town right there. Just a cool deer. We we hunted him a little bit with the bow this year and just never could lay eyes on him. They just are elusive sometimes during the rut. But boy, we got into late season and uh, he was pretty steady right here. We saw him the, the other time we hunted here, the first season, I shot that six by seven. and He was one of the last ones out like they usually are, the older bucks, but as soon as I saw him, I was like, there's your buck. What'd you think of it? Pretty cool. Told Pretty. you he looked like Bambi's dad coming out. Oh, he did too. Yeah, we watched that footage back and he was all muscled up there on top of that hill. It's beautiful. Congrats, Owen and Rachel, on a great buck. Now let's look to the east. It has been a long season for Josh Honeycutt while hunting in Kentucky. It's been his toughest season in more than a decade. But this past week, Josh's luck finally changed. years old hasn't been used in decades it's an old tobacco barn in GP's preferred bedding area a lot of the times not always he's pretty nomadic but a lot of the times he beds right in here close by
cut right there was the wide seven. The season is winding down. And that right there is my first ever muzzleloader buck. And I couldn't be more happy with that deer. We ain't got our hands on him yet, so I don't want to jinx it, but I'm pretty sure that's a dead deer. There he is. This is the buck that ended up killing here in Kentucky during our late muzzleloader season. Um, you know, it's it's been a tough season, and um, you know everybody says that at some point or another, but it, it truly has been the toughest season I've ever had uh, of my life. And this right here, you know, it's just one of those things where it's pretty cool too, because this is my first ever muzzleloader buck. You know, typically I tag out here in Kentucky uh, on my buck you know, in September or October. Rarely do I go to November, December. You know, this season's taught me a lot about uh, uh, patience, perseverance, and just a whole lot of different things. And, uh, uh, you know, it also taught me that uh, deer hunting's not all about shooting a big buck. There's about way more to it than just that. Uh, from the fun hunt that I had in Missouri and deer camp, just to hunting here at home with family and friends. You know, there's so much more to, to deer hunting than just shooting a big, you know, antlered whitetail buck. And I think sometimes we lose sight of that and forget about that and make it too much about the size of the animal and not enough about the heritage and the tradition and what we're truly out there for, hunting for, which is the venison. So I'm proud to put my Kentucky tag on this 2019 buck. With two bucks down, it's now time to catch up with the other members of our team. Mike Reed has spent much of his spare time during the past two weeks helping his daughter fill her youth tag. Mike and Bella have had some very good encounters. On one such hunt, Bella had a good 10 pointer in easy range, but was not mentally ready to fire the gun. She and Mike have since spent some time at the range and Bella is now comfortable with the gun and will be ready when the next opportunity arrives. Mike will also begin hunting farms outside the urban zone now that the firearm season is over and the late season has arrived. Drake Lamb spent the past week hunting my farm nearly every day, hunting does and tagging a few along the way. We are still shy of our season quota, but with Drake's help we are edging closer. Drake will now shift gears and start looking for a buck to hunt with his late season tag. At the risk of sounding like a broken record that keeps playing the same part of the song over and over, those of us who are strictly bow hunters have remained in a holding pattern like planes circling high above the airfield. Today, the late season has officially begun in Iowa and we finally have clearance from the tower to land. These past 16 days have felt like 40. I can't wait to get back out. I've not hunted the cornfield on my farm since November 22nd when I shot a great buck there. That is also where I'm placing my late season bet. My number one target is an old eight pointer that I've called the tube buck. Antler-wise, he's nothing special, but he's been around the farm for several years and will be a fun buck to hunt. I really think he will show up on that cornfield once I start hunting it again. As soon as the weather cools, that is where I will be, hopefully by the end of this coming week. Jared Mills has two bucks he's going after this week. One is the big 10-pointer he was hunting in early December around the open cornfield, but first he has to determine if the buck even made it through the gun season. He will also be hunting the buck he calls Merino, the one he spotted in late November on his river farm. Unless something else shows up, those are the bucks on which he will focus. Hunting wise, that is what we have planned, but I've left out the best part, the days we will be spending with family this Christmas season, celebrating the birth of our Savior and soaking up this wonderful time. If you have a couple of minutes, I invite you to bounce over to the Christmas devotional that Pastor Mike Toomey created for us. He always does a great job putting everything in perspective during this important time. We have a link to that devotional in the episode description below. Well, that's it for this episode. The coming week should be fun. We'll be back in the field with bow in hand. But most importantly, we wish you and your family a Merry Christmas. We appreciate you joining us on this journey. We will see you right back here again next week for the next episode of Midwest Whitetail. And remember to always dream big.